So, Miles, you've been a longtime aircraft owner and pilot and used your airplane a lot for personal and business use as you did video work uh, around the country. And then all of a sudden, with the accident that uh, led to the surgery and the loss of your arm, all that was taken away from you. What, uh, what was that like and what, what's your aviation experience these days? Well, I can tell you it was one of the first things I thought of when it happened to me. What am I going to do about flying? Uh -huh. you know, this is a big part of my life. Uh, it's, it's a passion I have uh, and, you know, we pilots understand this. I don't have to explain how important it is to us all to, to stay back in the air. Um, yeah, as soon as I practically could, I started thinking about, you know, what I could do, what I, what I should do. Uh, for other reasons, I had to sell my Cirrus, and I wasn't sure that was the perfect plane anyway. It's, you know, it's a left seat, left side stick. Mm -hmm. Probably have to sit in the right seat. Could I reach the breakers, the alternate air, all the things that are under the left seat? Lots of questions about that. Could I fly with my prosthetic arm? A million questions like that. And then I had the, the good fortune to, um, well, it was interesting because I had, had known Charles Stites with Able Flight, mm -hmm. had done uh, some work with them right. years ago, uh, actually helping him with an event where they pinned the wings on perhaps the most amazing pilot I've ever met, Jessica Cox, born without arms. Uh, this was at Oshkosh, and I had helped in that ceremony long before I was a customer, as it were. <laughs> and so one of the first things I did this year when I you know, was getting my bearings with my new life was uh, made it uh, my goal to go to Oshkosh and to connect with Charles Stites and this time see his world in a very different way. As it happened, he had uh, a recent uh, graduate of his program who had lost his left arm. And so he mm -hmm. and, and that young man and I went through Oshkosh kicking tires yep. on light sport aircraft that, that would work or maybe wouldn't or what here are the pros, here are the cons, and how to go about it. It was really one of the most important things I've done since I lost my arm because I realized it was going to be okay. I met a representative from Chesapeake Sport Pilot uh, not far from Annapolis, ne relatively near my home, and we started talking about the planes they had there, and she has a nice array of light sport aircraft. She said, come over, you know, we'll book you in three, four planes, and mm. just try them out. Yep. And so I had really the, the best day since I lost my arm was that day, <laughs> going there, in, a, in about a 20-knot crosswind, I might add. Oh, good for you. Uh, landing these planes, flying these airplanes, and learning, you know, what works. Should I fly with the prosthetic arm? Should I, you know, should I fly a center stick and, you know, kind of squeeze my knees on short final and, right. and tweak the throttle? Uh, but what I realized after doing it was, Tom, and it was such a good feeling, I, you know, I, I haven't had a chance to, um, you know, get fully signed off yet because I had some other projects, but I know I can do it, and that was a really good feeling. You know, there, there are people who, you know, Jessica is a great example. Mm -hmm. There are people who can fly with no arms, and, or there is one person that can fly with no arms. And uh, I, I know I can do this, and it's now the question is, as I work my way back toward aviation, what's, what's the plane going to be in my future? Good for you. You've been so positive through this. It's been a real inspiration for all of us. Um, how is it that you maintain that sort of positive nature, and what advice do you have for pilots who maybe are facing their own challenges uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and, and to, to deal with situations. Yeah, I mean, I suppose some of it, you know, is genetic. Some of it is just, uh, you know, a decision we all make in life uh, when you're faced with uh, adversity. I, 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 f I really feel as if it's a very binary thing. Uh, you either feel sorry for yourself and start going down a spiral, right. you know, the classic death spiral, right? <laughs> and, or, or you uh, make a conscious decision to be grateful you're alive uh, be thankful for what you have and, and, and deal with this challenge. You know, we, we as pilots, we, we seek challenges all the time, mm -hmm. don't we? Um, this is not a challenge I would ever seek, uh, but it's a challenge that can be overcome just like you can overcome getting that instrument ticket or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. It's another challenge for me to face in life, and I think uh, those of us in aviation who uh, set high goals for ourselves and, and meet them can understand how that can relate to a personal challenge like this. Not welcome, but it's the same mindset you go through as in a systematic way getting yourself uh, to you know some degree of success so um, you know I, I I just couldn't live my I, life is too precious to live any other way in my view um, so I I'm gonna stay on the on the the, the, the positive side of the binary equation uh, as long as I can good good well we're grateful for that we're grateful for the 
the accurate reporting that you've been bringing to CNN and all the big aviation stories that have happened this year. You've been really busy with that. I have. You know, it's um, you and I have talked about this uh, many times over the years. The you know uh, the USA Today's of the world. The, the, there, there are plenty of bad examples of horrible reporting mm -hmm. in the mainstream media on uh, our world, of not just general aviation, aviation in general, but in particular general aviation takes a lot of hits. And it's, um, it's unfortunate and it's just a reflection of a lot of really bad trends in the media business. And, and among them is there aren't a lot of people with specialties working at newspapers and, and mainstream outlets anymore who know things about technical matters, science matters, or for that matter, know how to fly. And so it was gratifying to me, you know, because uh, CNN in 2008 decided it didn't need a science and technology unit, and right. myself and, and seven others were, were told our services were no longer needed, which was an amazing thing when you think about it. Science and technology is not that important. Mm -hmm. And out the door went a lot of expertise, including the, the aviation expertise, which I brought to bear. So when this plane went missing and it became CNN's, you know, um, constant uh, uh, coverage uh, cycle, uh, they, I think they understood that they needed somebody who had some expertise, and so they called me back. So it was a bit of a vindication yeah, tour. It was. There's no question. Um, and uh, I, feel, I do feel an obligation, uh, not to get too high on my horse, but I, uh, you know, I, I went back and forth as to whether I would want to go back. And part of it is I, I do feel that we need somebody in that realm who's trying to keep things from getting too far off the center line and and things left to their own devices uh, it, it can get pretty crazy yep yep so one final thing on those who are um, facing physical difficulties of their own and are interested in learning to fly what kind of advice do you have for them about the challenges they face one of the first things I thought of was Jessica Cox you know if Jessica Cox can fly we all can fly mm -hmm. right now admittedly she's not gonna fly every aircraft on the planet but she can fly uh, we all uh, are, you know, eventually are going to have to deal with a medical issue one way or another. We're going to have to contend with that for some of us sooner, some of us later in, in our, our flying lives. The, the important thing is to be your own advocate and go, you know, go to Oshkosh and find people like Charles Stites, in my case, who, have, who, are, who are there to help. I mean, pilots, take, we do take care of each other. We, we do. really do. It's an amazing community and it's an, and you know, you want to meet some great people you know, go to an air show or go to an airport or sit in a hangar. They're the best people you'll ever meet. And, and they are, I, everybody I have talked to says, yes, we can do this. You, I, it would be my pleasure to help you learn how to do this. You can, and, and gives me 10 suggestions on how to go about it. And I, the important thing, just like what, what we talked about at the beginning of this, is not to get into that death spiral. You know, think about, okay, this is, this is going to be different. Uh, this is not what I'm used to. But it's just one more challenge, and and it can be done. It really can. I, I you know, we all um, can can uh, get ourselves in situations where it's difficult to see our way through. Uh, but you know, you know, right, hope, right there at, at minimums. Hopefully, you'll see the runway environment as it is, and 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 just stay focused on it. And that runway will be there. All right. Thanks, Miles, for for joining us and for all the the great reporting you do on aviation and general aviation in particular. Uh, you're welcome, Tom. Thank you.